Welcome everyone. I'm just so delighted that you've tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni. And if you're listening for the first time, All About Alumni is a platform to showcase Hawthorne University grads who are going to share their post-grad activities and accomplishments. You know, the many ways that they're using their Hawthorne education and their practices is nothing short of amazing. We have a variety of nationally accredited degree and certificate programs at Hawthorne. Some are for those that are pursuing a clinical track with the goal of working directly with their clients. And we have other programs that are dedicated to those that are seeking primarily to educate, whether that's writing books, develop courses, workshops, do public speaking, teach for schools. And then we have other programs for those who simply want to learn valuable, credible information in a conducive environment. And the success of our students is really a testament to Hawthorne's mission and principles to provide quality, affordable, holistic health and nutrition education. You know, we love to learn more at Hawthorne and share it with you too. It, we've just had so many fantastic Hawthorne graduate presentations. So I hope you'll explore the Hawthorne uh, archived webinars on our website and view their presentations too. I'm your host, Paula Bartholomew. I'm one of the founders of Hawthorne, and really it's such a privilege to speak with and feature our graduates, so I want to get us started with this one. Today we feature Missy Beavers. She's a graduate from our unique Masters in Traditional Nutrition program, and she's going to address the gift of disease, how illness shaped and defined her career path. We'll hear about Missy's experiences as she shares her professional developments after graduating from Hawthorne, including her early life health concerns that turned out to be the gift that sparked the lifelong search for answers to her own and then her husband's health struggles. She has put her MSTN degree from Hawthorne to good use in developing a protocol that restores immune function and reverses symptoms of disease through healing the gut. And after 28 years of taking thyroid medication, Missy herself is now prescription free and thrives on helping others regain their health as she has done. So in this presentation, Missy will give us behind the scene details on how she purchased her own health food store, grew a thriving practice, and developed a leaky gut protocol, which is now launched online with its own app. She teaches that it is our thoughts and our beliefs that provide us with the results that we seek and that we're all capable of amazing things. All right, let's get into some amazing things here today because while I have the pleasure of interviewing Missy, you also have the opportunity to ask her questions directly too. So don't hold back. All you have to do is post a question at any time or a comment to the question panel. And a reminder that we're recording this and we'll post it to our website and you'll find it under archived webinars in just a few days. All that said, welcome Missy. I'm so happy and excited to be here together. Yes, thank you Paula. I'm excited to be here too. Excellent. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce you and have you share your postgrad experiences. So I'll start out with saying that Missy graduated from our Masters of Traditional Nutrition program from Hawthorne in June of 2016. She currently owns the Health Habit, which is a health food store and supplement store nestled in the tiny rice farming community of Northern California. Her love and passion is focused on healing the gut to reverse symptoms of autoimmune disease and create vibrant health. She owns the Healthy Navel, which is her 12-week protocol to seal the gut, heal any pathogens that cause problems, and heal the relationship between the mind and the body. She and her husband have a three-year-old son, two big dogs who might as well be counted as children, and Missy adores her business, her store, her family, and her life in a small town. She works with clients all over the nation and enjoys helping others find abundant health through healing the gut, mind, and body. Wow, we're so pleased you've joined us to hear Missy's story. Missy, are you ready to share it? I am, let's do it. All right, let's get going. How about we start out with how you got interested in health and, and really holistic health specifically? All right, so my story is not unique in the sense that it started with my own health struggles. And I think that's fair of a lot of people that come to Hawthorne because we are interested in healing ourselves. So when I was eight years old, I started having headaches. That was my first trigger. And then I started gaining weight rapidly. So within one year, I gained 50 pounds, had these headaches, developed reading comprehension problems. Um, the teachers are thinking I have a brain tumor. The doctors are thinking the same. I'm having all this testing done. My parents are terrified. Nobody can get to the bottom of this. So we did a full year of traditional medicine uh, trying to diagnose. 
And after a year of that and 50 pounds, my primary care provider uh, tested my thyroid and discovered that I had Hashimoto disease. So this is back in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And it was a rarity at that time to have a child with Hashimoto. So what came from that is a lot of interest in me. So it became dietitians and doctors and um, all uh, different medical uh, genres are interested in what I'm, what I'm doing and how is this working and is the treatment working? And I was doing synthetic thyroid replacement at that time and the weight was never slowing down. So I just continued to gain weight. So when I was in my teen years, I realized that these doctors weren't going to solve it for me. Um, I'd been through several rounds of dietitians and all of them failed me in terms of uh, diet to reduce weight. And we did the Weight Watchers, we did the Pritikin Protocol, we did the Zone, all of those popular plans from the 90s. You know, I was a kid going to school with a lunchbox full of little baggies of things. So funny. <laughs> so, um, but none of it was working to reduce my weight. So the interest truly was about uh, you know, I'm eating all the things that are correct. So why is the weight not manifesting that? Mm -hmm. And that led me into um, trying different things with my own health outside of the dietitians, researching more about gut, researching about health. And then when I was uh, 21, I got diagnosed with celiac disease. So by this point now, I've got two autoimmune diseases. And this is where things get really interesting because now we've got these two autoimmune diseases and, and we know now that those, those two like to run together. But it really got me looking into the gut about where the autoimmune disease begins. So nothing was working to control the weight. Uh, the thyroid dose just kept going up and up and up and up. And then when I was in my 20s, I met a holistic practitioner and she got me onto a, a bioidentical thyroid, the desiccated thyroid. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my whole life, I maintained weight. So I didn't actually lose weight, but I stopped gaining. So that was big to me. And yeah, that started some, some interest into absorption. And perhaps is this a gut issue? Is it a medication issue? Let's mm -hmm. start looking into this. Mm -hmm. So I changed my career study to nutrition mm -hmm. and um, started learning. You know, this is, this is now in the early thousands. And back then it was all about calories in, calories out. Yeah. So, you know, I went on a starvation diet and I did really well. I lost 80 pounds starving myself and didn't prove anything through that diet because the second that I ate nourishing foods again, I put them back on. So um, it was interesting to try all these different models and see what worked for me. But what happened moving forward, I had the, I had the degree and then I started working in various government nutrition jobs. So I worked for WIC. And that was a really good experience because I was educating all of these young moms mm -hmm. on how they should give their kids juice, huge glasses of juice, right. and cereals, and all of these manufactured items, things I didn't believe in. And then next I went to working on Native American reservations where we give them processed cheese products and dried milk, and we give them all of these damaged foods. And then um, I worked in public health. And then I worked in skilled nursing where it's the same idea. We're giving all of these at-risk populations, we're giving them really uh, nutrient void food. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just didn't want to work in this industry anymore. My interest had been in traditional food. Um, by that time I had discovered Weston A. Price Foundation and I was eating a traditional diet. And um, I just, I didn't want to work in a space where we were, we were not providing the best nutrition to people. And you tried a number of different diets along the way. Is that right? Yes, I did. I did, you know, I did keto and paleo and AIP and low carb, raw food. I even did vegan for a while and gained weight on that one. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen. Uh-huh. But those well, were all good because it got me looking into what about the food specifically is the issue. So you didn't want to continue to work in government setting what kind of job were you looking for so that is where my world opened up i knew i didn't want to work in a government setting and i live in a, a small town so the choices here with my nutrition degree were either to work on the nearby native american reservation or i could work um, at the hospital here i could work skilled nursing or WIC. these are the 
the choices. Um, and I just felt like the education isn't, isn't right for the population. So I started looking at somewhere I could work where I could create it. And that enters my health food store. Mm -hmm. So this was in 2012. Um, there's a little health food store. It had been there for nine years before we bought it downtown in our little town. And um, the owners were retiring, so they put it up for sale. And it took us a whole year to be able to come up with funding for it. It was this whole process. But that turned out to be a blessing because we were able to tie up all the loose ends. We got this health food store. And then two weeks after we bought it, my husband was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. Wow. And that was a shocker because he's a competitive uh, weightlifter. And one, one month before the diagnosis, he actually got a state record in California. He lifted, uh, I think it was 568 pounds. And so he bench pressed that weight. He's in the prime of his health. He gets a state record. And then one month later, he's fallen down and he can't even stand up. And he uh, has got acute myeloid leukemia. It's, it is crazy how fast leukemia switches on. Yes. So, so yeah, so we go to Stanford. They rush us away. And it was one of those things where either we treat him right now or he's dead in two weeks. So yeah. it was a, a crazy time for me with my holistic mindset of like, maybe we can fix this holistically. <laughs> it's like, no, not with his type. So, um, so we moved to Stanford and Stanford's about three and a half hours away from us. And he got um, induction rounds of chemo and radiation and he got put into remission. And then we waited for them to find a match. And this was intense because his background, he's Native American and German. And they told us straight up, we will never find a match for him. Like that's not gonna happen. Uh -huh. And which is so discouraging to hear that. But um, over months, they actually ended up finding three perfect matches. And which is incredible because what they're looking for is 12 markers and all three of them had the, the 12 match. So, um, the first one fell through, the second one didn't pass the physical, and then the third one actually was the charm. And Excellent. a little ditty, uh, we named our son after her. Our son is named Bo, which is part of her last name. So that's just a little something from there. So anyway, he got the bone marrow transplant, and um, I didn't know this previous to being in the cancer world, but bone marrow transplants are considered the most dangerous and risky procedure in modern medicine. Yeah, and the sure reason, are. oh, they're crazy. And you know, they're, they're more dangerous than brain surgery and heart transplants because they have to kill every cell in your whole body before yeah. they reintroduce the new cells. Yes. And, and so if you survive that. Exactly. It's, it is terrifying. So, um, and a lot of people get the graft versus host. That's where, you know, they didn't adequately kill your own cells. And so your cells kill the new cells. So, um, and the the survival rate is one in three the first year after transplant so we knew that going in we knew that um no treatment means death we knew that treatment means one in three and then the odds get better every year after that you survive so um he had the transplant and they said and it was so funny this nutritionist came in not knowing my background and she's explaining to me how the gut works and she's explaining that they're gonna put him on high dose prednisone, so he's gonna to need to start insulin and this and that. And I was like, yeah, why don't we just do this through diet? Why don't we just try this through diet? And she was like, well, we don't really have a protocol for that. So here's his insulin pen, he can eat donuts, he can eat this. <laughs> he'll be fine. <laughs> he'll be fine. So I was like, let me just have that insulin pen and goodbye. So um, we did the autoimmune paleo basically with him. We did no dairy, no nuts, no eggs, no grains, anything that would inflame uh, those mm -hmm. villi in the digestive tract. Right. And, um, you know, just a lot of bone broth based soups and a lot of gelatin and glutamine and things like that. And he walked out of there two weeks later and it was just insane to watch that. He did so good. And um, as we were walking out, one of the doctors chased me down and he was like, what did you do with him? What, why did he not have to use the insulin? We've never had anyone go through this and not use insulin because he yes. was taking 80 milligrams of prednisone a day, which is insane. Significant, yeah. Yes, and his blood sugars were in the two and three hundreds, but we would have him walk and his sugars would come down to normal levels. So um, anyway, talking to the doctor, I was explaining what we did and 
his face got really sad because he said, I believe in what you're saying, but that's not something we can do here. And it was, it was a heartbreaking moment for me because it's not, he said, it's not backed by Western medicine. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's unfortunate. So anyway, my husband did great. And, and I actually got offered a job multiple times at Stanford because my husband was like a poster child. But I also want to be clear, he was in great health when he got the leukemia. So it's not always fair to say, you know, that it was everything we did, but he was in really good health. And oftentimes people are older and they're not weightlifters, yeah. but but it does, the, the gut definitely, the gut approach definitely helped him. So um, so that was a springboard for me, the Stanford event, because a lot of doctors would ask what my education was. And I'd say, oh, well, I have an undergrad in nutrition. And they would say, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so I knew I needed something higher if I wanted to be recognized. And then I started looking for universities. Well, looking for university, and and you landed at some point in, in Hawthorne. So talk a little bit about what led you to Hawthorne and, and how you discovered us. All right. So um, I went to an NANP conference. It was through Designs for Health, which is one of the products I carry at my store. And that's where I discovered Hawthorne University. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned I'd always had this passion for traditional nutrition. And when they mentioned that it was a Weston A. Price uh, approach for the degree, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Is this made for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this was mm -hmm. made specifically mm -hmm. for me because I had been eating that way for a long time. And, you know, Sally Fallon's books are like, they're in my kitchen. There's mm -hmm. reading material over the house. So that was really exciting for me to have something that already coincided with my belief system. Um, I also liked that it was online. Um, because being in a small town, I didn't have the option to travel. Um, you know, the nearest big city is going to be hours away, so I'm not going to be able to do that. My husband was still recovering from his illness, so the online part of it was really important. And, um, you know, I had that passion for gut health, which was a big part of the, the MSTN. And also the master's degree was a, it was representing a springboard for all these opportunities that, that were going to open up to me with the, the master's. So those are the big drawing points. And then the thing I like too about Hawthorne, this was another drawing point for me, was the ongoing education. Because when I was researching it, you know, I had access to watch um, things like this, you know, and I, I could see the ongoing education and knew that that was going to be important for me so I could stay at the top of my game. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard you say that your degree was really significant for you. You know, um, you said a game changer. Yeah. Uh, can you say what ways? Oh, that is so great. Um, so, in what ways it, you know, I'm going to skip back. We're not there yet. So, in what ways it, it absolutely helped with um, stepping me up in the community. Uh -huh. So, it helped me to network with practitioners who wouldn't bat an eye at me before. Mm -hmm. um, because of my community health jobs in the past, I know, I know all the doctors in town. I, you know, I've got great relationships with everyone. But when you are on the master's level, it becomes a whole lot easier to network and communicate with them and to build, um, I'm going to say, uh, greater communication networks than the, than the undergrad had provided. Uh -huh. It also opened up uh, avenues for me to help with, you know, authoring papers or um, commenting on, on, I work with one doctor specifically in town where I comment a lot on client cases and um, help with that, help with the nutrition piece of it. So that, that wasn't available to me with my, with my undergrad. Did you find that you were um, welcomed in a different way to participate in various discussions or events that you previously didn't have credentials to qualify for? Oh, absolutely. And then the other big thing was, you know, I own this health food store and a lot of times, um, you know, anyone can own a health food store. But when I got my master's degree, it became the do you know the health habit? The lady has a master's degree. So it became a, an opportunity for people to come in, I guess, for a, a better clout behind what I was saying. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the most valuable thing your degree has done for you at this point? Great. So the degree really got me more into the gut health that I've been talking about. So with the degree behind my name and with the education I received, I was really ready to launch into leaky gut and just unleash all of my passion. And that is where 
my protocol was born. So all disease begins in the gut. Hippocrates said that 2,500 years ago. And, you know, back in that day, they knew that. And it's funny that Western medicine is just catching up with this. And what's really funny is I went to a conference and like, this was like 2016, and a doctor stood up. He was one of the immunology doctors, one of the leading doctor in the nation. And he said, we have data now showing that all autoimmune diseases begin in the gut. And it was the coolest moment because everyone in the crowd went wild, except for the nutritionists who were sitting there that were like, yeah. <laughs> so what's interesting, though, is they're throwing a lot of research dollars into this now. So yes. that kind of springboarded me into, OK, I've got two autoimmune diseases. He now is saying it begins in the gut. I've known that since you know my whole nutrition career. So mm -hmm. it got me searching deeper into it. So um, I created a leaky gut protocol. And this was based on research I'd been doing for the 15 years I've been in this field. And um, it's just different products, different research. I go to a lot of conferences. I'm talking to doctors. I'm building this protocol. So I built my protocol. I tried it on myself. And within three months, I was off of thyroid medication. Which amazing. was, yeah, it was amazing because I'd spent 28 years. It's unheard of. Yeah, trying to navigate this. So that was my first like, oh my, what is this? Mm -hmm. Let's try it on someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, I have a lot of clientele through my store because I'm also a Zyda practitioner, which I, I noted earlier, and that's based on energy medicine. Mm -hmm. So people come to me for Zyto scans and the Zyto scan will tell you, um, you know, imbalances in the body. It can pinpoint pathogens. We use it for hormone imbalances, bacteria. So people are coming to me for that weekly. That schedule for me is booked. So I started uh, running those clients through this program and we're having these repeated results. There's people getting off of thyroid medication. There's people getting off of painkillers and prednisone and they're, they're feeling better and their, their gut is healing and it's incredible. So um, it was time to take it online because what the problem with having um, a store in a small town is you only have access to the people that live here. And I knew that this program was too good to sit on. I knew that there was people outside of my area that could benefit, so I wanted to take it online. I get it. I get it. So, um, you didn't already have an all, uh, online presence at that time, right? So, how did you start this process of, of moving it online? Okay, so it's a great question. I went to Facebook and I watched dozens of webinars about funnels and email lists and pricing structures. Um, I watched a lot of the All About Alumni of people that have done this. And Honestly, I just felt overwhelmed and confused and frozen because it was going to take a lot of my time, I felt. And I felt like um, I didn't want to put my time into doing that. I want to be with clients. So I thought about hiring people to do it. I thought about hiring it out. And then I just got really still and I shut all the chatter off and I tuned into myself. And the answer that came to me, it was already there. It was this. Just start with an infographic. It's so simple. Just make an infographic. Well, how did you do that? So I did that through, I used Word. I'm not a computer whiz at all. Let's be clear on that. So I, in Word, I just wrote down everything I had been teaching in all of my client consults. Mm -hmm. So you know when, when you consult with clients, you're, you're teaching the same things over and over and over again. So um, I just put all of the education I'd been giving them onto a Word document. And then I uploaded it to a site called Upwork. Mm -hmm. and that is my new favorite place in the world. It's amazing. So um, <laughs> have you used it before? Yes, a little bit. Oh, it's so great. So you upload your document and then different designers will, will bid for it. And then you can look at their profile and see their work. So this one, I paid a designer $30 to make it. And he's in Russia. And it's incredible. Like it's, I was completely awed and amazed that he took my jumbled mess and made it gorgeous like that. So yes. um, so I made this infographic and then I, I gave it to massage therapists and practitioners in the area that I network with. And then um, I, it was crazy because all I did was hand those out and I had my store info on it and then people just started showing up. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, the interest is here, the education's here and the interest is coming. So I didn't even develop the website until months upon months later. <laughs> well, I'm, I, you've piqued my interest now. Let's talk a little bit more about your program. Okay. 
So my program is three simple steps. It is to seal the gut, to kill any pathogens that are causing uh, damage to the gut, and then to heal the lining. So you can see here, these are actually pictures from my app. Um, we use glutamine, high dose glutamine for the seal phase. I borrowed this from the work of Arlen Hill. He's done some fascinating research on high dose glutamine for um, sealing the gut lining. Yes. Um, yeah, it's so good. What that does is it heals those junctions between the cells. So step one is to seal everything in, then we kill. And I like to use liposomals for that because they liposomals are the most potent uh, delivery system for you know killing pathogens. Mm -hmm. I use the the Zyto at this point, the Zyto scan because it will help me pinpoint the pathogen. I do a lot with yeast, um, SIBO, uh, the different clostridiums. We do a lot with mold. Uh, it helps me pinpoint. We have 200 bacteria we can check. So this can be done in person, or I have the technology to do a hair scan, so I can take people all over the nation. Mm -hmm. And um, once we identify the pathogen, then we, we pick something to kill it. And then the heal phase, that's where probiotics come in. And then I do use the autoimmune paleo diet. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned with my husband, um, short term, we pull out eggs, dairy, nuts, and grains, because those are extremely inflammatory. And when we're trying to heal the gut, it doesn't make sense to have foods in them that are going to continue to tear it apart. So we pull those out while we're in the the seal phase. And do you find that, you know, through healing, then you can reintroduce some of these foods and have them be tolerated? Absolutely. So with my own experience, um, I didn't know until I pulled out eggs that I had a problem with them. You know, uh -huh. I've been eating them every day. It's fine. I eat them all the time. They're healthy. They've got all these good nutrients. And I pulled them out for a month. And when I put them back in, my gums immediately inflamed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yes. And I didn't know that because it had been happening every day. So right. pulled them out again. It actually took me three months until I could tolerate eggs again. And we see that a lot with people, those trigger foods. Um, it can take up to three months. And some people just can't tolerate those foods again. And that's fine. This is about nourishing the body. It's not about restriction. And what, what happened with your own celiac? So my celiac, of course, is in remission by not having gluten. Um, yeah, the celiac's been fine. My son does have celiac as well. So that's, that's been an interesting ride mm -hmm. there. Trying to get a three-year-old to go places and people not feed him gluten. <laughs> There's an additional step in your, um, in your protocol, in your program, in terms of um, healing the relationships. What's that? Um, with the app. So yes. the app is the... Right, back to that. <laughs> yeah, back to the app. The app's the important part because what I was finding is, is people... People who come to me physically and sit in my office, you know, we're meeting every week, we're talking about what's going on, I'm answering the questions, I'm giving them the support and the feedback. But people across the nation don't have that option, nor do I have the time. So I discovered, oh, we skipped a slide, but let me, let me just talk about this really quick. Um, this was for the probiotic that we use on the protocol. This is one I actually created. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned how I use liposomals. I don't like to use capsules or tablets anymore because they don't absorb well with leaky gut. So this probiotic, I actually designed, and it's exciting because it heals the gut junctions. It reduces heavy metals. It reduces histamines. It helps with digestions of fats, proteins, uh, carbs, and macros. It is a cool probiotic. So we've seen really cool stuff with this mm -hmm. one as well. Excellent. So Excellent. that's the heal. Okay, well, so the app. Slide up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> There, there we are. So, um, so I developed the app to help walk the clients through the 12 week protocol. And um, I actually discovered it through another practitioner I work with. They use it, it's called bodysite.com. So the, the website provides the templates. So they provide the meals, they provide the recipes, and then you can kind of like a la carte grab. So they had the, they had the template for AIP meals. Mm -hmm. And so I could grab them and I could put them in. Um, the, the meals are not sufficient enough for full calorie intake. So I've been tweaking the app to give, you know, different side dishes and things. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I could add my own education and the education that I provide is just daily insight on why we're doing what we're doing, what's happening in your gut, how we got to where we are, uh, basically all the things I would tell you if you're sitting in front of me. Mm -hmm. So every day, uh, my client gets an email from me that has the education. Within the app, there's bonus materials. It's really cool. There's videos that talk about um, 
exactly what we're talking about here. It'll review leaky gut, there's recipes, um, there's videos about how to use the supplements. And the videos there's, you created, right? Yeah, so I did all the videos and I'm always adding to that. You know, when what I'm finding is all the clients have similar questions. So, you know, people are asking questions and I'm throwing videos in there all the time. It's, it's amazing. There's never a lack of information I can provide. Certainly. How long does it take to develop? So the app took me 12 weeks to develop. And this is really funny because I was developing it in real time with my clients. So mm -hmm. I got the app, I had people signed up for it, and I was only one day ahead of them. And mm -hmm. what I was doing is I was pulling from, you know, I already have all this information in my laptop. So I was just pulling from different educations I'd done. But, you know, it really showed me that we don't need to be done with anything to succeed. We can, we can jump in right now. We can be one day ahead of our clients. They don't know. <laughs> it's great. It comes down to mindset, right? Exactly. It comes down to mindset. And, and it's something that's included in your program, right? Absolutely. So mindset is a big piece of what I teach. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the gut and the brain, they are connected through the nervous system and also through uh, the bacteria. So the, the enteric nervous system, it actually lines the villi in the digestive tract. So when we have a thought, it actually will translate into nervous signals into our gut. And I know I don't have to go deeply into that because we've all had a gut feeling before, right? Mm -hmm. Or butterflies in the stomach. Ev everyone is so familiar with uh, feelings in the gut. So what I teach is that your thoughts, what we think in our head, actually translates into a production of hormones or a production of a nervous signal that creates a feeling. And the feeling is a physical response to the thought. So a lot of times people come to this protocol with the belief or the thought that they can't be healed. And I understand that because I, I functioned in that thought for 28 years. You know, nothing was gonna help me. I've already tried all these things, I can't be healed. And when you live in that thought process, you're actually creating uh, chaos in your gut all the time. So a huge part of my program focuses on changing the negative thought patterns because when we change those thoughts, we release the feelings that are happening on a physical level in the body, literal physical responses, that changes our actions and then we have a different result. Well, is the mindset then part of the app or how, how, how do you do that? Do you work with clients one-on-one -on -one with it? Yeah, so it is, it's both. It's um, within the app, there's a, we go over about 10 days of mindset management. And then that's, if you only purchase the app, you get the education there. But I have a higher protocol where we actually work together and we work one-on-one -on -one and I do um, video calls every week so that we can work on mindset and work on clearing these thoughts and building new nourishing thoughts. Mm -hmm. So you have two two program options, is that right? Mm -hmm. And why would somebody choose one versus the other? So that's a great question. Um, it would be, there we go. Um, the self run protocol is so good for people who are already in the health field who, you know, someone like me, somebody mm -hmm. who's researched all the things, they know all the stuff, they just need the app to help walk them through it. Okay. And I'm totally okay with that. I understand there's people in that realm. So, um, and that would be, you know, for students out there that already know this stuff, great. So the app walks you through how to do it. Um, the thing that I wrote there, we don't need to help everyone, we just need to help the right ones. That was a huge mindset adjustment for me because when I originally made it, I thought everyone's just gonna do the app. And then I realized that it's almost better to do um, helping less people at a higher dollar a smaller number of people at a higher dollar package and giving them the care that they need. Uh -huh. So the app is on greater terms, success with that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In terms of their outcomes. Absolutely. Because when I first started, I was just doing the app and um, what, what I found is that the app's great, but they had a lot of questions and I wasn't able to provide that because I had too many people rolling. So what I do now is I enroll, I enroll a certain amount of people in the higher dollar package. So, you know, I could help 100 people with the app or I could help 10 people at the higher dollar package and it's the same amount of money and those 10 people are going to have greater success outcomes. Mm -hmm. But you see people flowing through both uh, options. I do right? and it's, it's been good. Yeah, it's good to have both options because some people with the app do phenomenal. 
they absolutely do. So, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you market this program and, and ultimately how you enroll clients. Okay, so marketing, I, um, I actually haven't done much at this point. Uh, we have a Facebook presence with the store. So, um, you know, I, I, I've done minimal marketing so far because with the network options in town, I'm getting enough clients that way. Um, we do uh, conferences. We just started doing these this summer and it's been really great. We hold free conferences. And we explain about leaky gut. It's a lot of the same format of this webinar, actually. Where we just explain how the gut works, and we do it with um, with motion and movement. It's really fun. My my best friend and business partner, she's a a rec therapist, so she has some really cool activities that get people moving and help illustrate how the gut becomes leaky and how um, it just gets the mindset working with it and how the way we think about things affects it. It's really really fun. So the conferences have been really good. That's a great way to um, get people talking about it. And then, you know, if 10 people come to a conference, they tell 10 people. So mm -hmm. we're getting enrollment that way. Mm -hmm. um, I do um, have clients already with the Zytoscan. So then some of them are, are marketed too. So um, in terms of enrollment, I do enrollment four times a year. This is for the highest program. So for the app, you can sign up anytime. That doesn't matter. You can do it any day of the week. Um, for the, the higher package, though, that's four times a year. Okay. And I meet with or consult over the phone with each client, get them started on the app, get them their specific supplements, make sure they're clear on their protocol. And then those people go into a Facebook group. So there's a lot of chatter that goes on in the Facebook group about, you know, can I eat this? Can I eat that? What about this? And just mm -hmm. questions, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they support each other. It's great. And then once a week, we do uh, phone calls with the group via Zoom. That platform mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. So those consults or the, the weekly call is really good because that's when people start saying, I can't stick to this diet. It's too hard. I can't live without this or that. And that's where I get to say, great, let's look into that thought. Yes. And we get yes. to start digging around and saying, okay, is that true? Can uh -huh. you really not live without dairy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the, the mindset piece on the weekly call is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do a monthly one-to-one -one consult. Well, actually, it's the first month and then the last month um, via phone or in person to talk about how they're doing and, you know, just review what's going on. And then the cool thing about the app, when you're in the highest program, there's a messaging option. So they can send me private messages anytime they want. I only answer them during specific business hours. But that's a really cool... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was tempting in the beginning to answer at 11 o'clock at night. But... Um, but that's a, it's a great uh, benefit for people who aren't comfortable posting in the group and just have a, is this normal question? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Just tremendous support um, and very well thought out of what the needs are and filling them uh, in a very convenient way. Bravo. Yeah, thank you. So a little bit about what are you going to do with this now? What are your future goals with this program? Well, I'm going to the moon. <laughs> I always say I can I can do anything I want. <laughs> so um, conferences and seminars, I I absolutely adore doing these conferences, and I I love it when people get the aha, and especially when they can see where their thoughts are limiting them. Mm -hmm. So, end game, I would really love to do conferences, maybe for corporations, um, even for you know like uh, clinics in town, anything like yeah. that in the medical world, because. I can see how necessary that is since working on the inside of those um, organizations. Yes. So, yeah, I, I see a place for me there. Um, my clients are already asking for ebooks and printed books. So that's something I'll be doing sooner than later. And they're all they're asking for podcasts right now. So I think my my next steps are going to be ebooks and podcasts. And then then I'll go to the moon after that. All right. <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost there. <laughs> Well, it's so important to learn to work together in many different ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're trying to train the bacteria to do that. You might as well be able to do it yourself. Well, that's exactly it. And that's the big piece is that, you know, I talk about how there's an estimated four to 10 bacteria organisms for every human cell. That number keeps changing, <laughs> but um, it used to be 10. Now they're saying four, but we're outnumbered by our bacteria. And we know that there's more pathogens than we are human. So if we can't get along with ourselves and with our community, how do we expect our body to get along? How do we expect, expect the bacteria in our body to get along with us and, and work for our best good? Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. Well, it seems like, you know, your progress is really evolving, confidence is building, um, and that the degree is serving you. I'm going to come back here to degree a minute because it seems like it's been really significant for your growth and your confidence. Oh, Would you say so? Massively, massively. Um, you know, the MSTN, it's really, I like that it's that full MSTN because it could just say MS, but I get a lot of questions about the TN part. Yes. And when I explain that it's traditional nutrition, it is so fun to see people's eyes because you'll get, you know, you'll get one of two responses. One is, well, that's not applicable anymore. <laughs> and the other response is, we need to go back to that. So it's really fun to marry that with what I'm doing because I, I feel like it's not debatable that a lot of these diseases didn't exist before we started eating garbage mm -hmm. three times a day. Mm -hmm. You know, people know that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really appreciate the, the traditional nutrition of it. And then just having the masters, it's the clout that I need to, to do all these things. And, and you know, Paul, I've been thinking about doing the doctorate just for that extra level so I can do papers and present at different events that I'm going to the moon. It, it is the moon and that, you know, that's part of the moon journey for you. I think it's, mm -hmm. it, it's beautiful timing because we're currently offering a special on the, the doctoral program and there's a great opportunity there to step into a, I love this program. It's it really will advance on what you learned in your master's degree, of course, but mm -hmm. it takes it really to a, um, national, international, really global level in terms of policy, um, so many things that you would be able to affect. When you see what came from your undergrad degree to your master's degree and the doors that that's opened for you, yeah. think Dr. Missy Beavers. How's that sound? It sounds so great. And it's just, like you said, it's incredible to see the difference between an undergrad and a master's. And then to take that one more level, it's like, I can't handle it. <laughs> the opportunities are endless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you say has been the biggest factor in the success of this program in yourself and offering it? So that's a great question. You know, I always say divine intervention is the biggest piece of it because every mm -hmm. step of this process has been divinely designed. And it's been a miracle for me to stand back and watch what has happened in my life in the sense that, um, you know, I used to believe that I would have to be done with an app. I would have to be done with this. I'd have to be done. I'd have to get a doctorate before I could do this. You know, that's, that's the way the human brain works is we, we think we have to be at a certain space before we can succeed. Mm -hmm. And um, changing the mindset was the biggest piece. As I wrote here, I used to believe that this level of success was beyond my reach. But now I know that it was that belief that created my feelings, actions, and results. So I function under this mantra right here, you are capable of amazing things. And I say that to everyone on this call, there is nothing you can't do. And I'm proving that, you know, I'm enrolling clients for a program that's not even done and people are getting better. And it's, it's just been a miracle to watch. And, and, you know, I've had the pleasure of you allowing me inside the back door, so to speak, and see your inner workings of the app and, and really how you're stepping this all the way through and just say just how impressive um, the program is, but really it's you, Missy, yeah. and, and how you deliver it and your spirit and your energy and your enthusiasm and the fact that you healed yourself. Oh, you know, you, you're coming in so authentically and with a great deal of integrity because of that, you know, just in the confidence with your degree. I'm very proud of you and just Thank you, Paula. thrilled to be able to, to witness your success at this point and yeah, I'm going to have to get some long distance vision glasses to be able to see you get all the way to the moon, right? You'll see me there. And I really appreciate that because, you know, I do believe that everyone can heal. And healing, you know, that's open to your, your interpretation of it. But, you know, if you're not confident you can heal, then borrow my confidence. Because I see people heal every single day on this protocol. And it's, it's amazing. It's, it's miraculous. And like I said, healing sometimes doesn't look like what we expect it to be, but it's always something better than where we were. Well, just a, really a testament is your own healing and your husband's. Yes. Of, it's like, well, we could do insulin, but we could do a gut heal protocol. And they're like, yeah. gut heal protocol, what will that do? You need insulin. But it was such remarkable results that you're seeing. And 
the documentation that you shared with me of the results that you're you're getting with other clients because of their commitment. Exactly. And, and then it's really your passion and and how you've put all of this together that keeps people committed. And I would imagine, you know, doing the um, the group together, there's a lot of juice yes. that's generated and, in that too. And the group is just fun. Like I, I just love being in a space where we can all look at our thoughts and we can just say, it's okay that you think that. Do you want to keep thinking that? Do you want to keep feeling that way? And if mm -hmm. not, then let's change it. You know, it's just, it's a safe space and it's a fun place to, to really just take our brains out and observe what it is we're thinking. Because what I've, what I've discovered from this is that a lot of us don't even know what we're thinking. You know, until we speak it to someone and they speak it back to us, it's like, oh, is that in my brain? <laughs> that was in there. So speaking of brain and, and progress and everything, at this point in, in the program and your development and career, are you making the kind of money that you hope to be making at this point? And do you see it uh, able to increase? Absolutely. So, you know, it's funny with my store because this is all wrapped up into one you know, this all runs through my store. So the store was doing pretty good, but we've increased sales by like 200% this year, just adding the protocol. So yes, I've been able to hire um, more staff. I'm seeing a space where um, the store is a support for what we're doing. Because again, the, the big problem was that the store, we're beholden to foot traffic. So um, seeing a space where we can move into online sales and we can help people all over the nation and it's not just people in our small town. That's right. Amazing yeah. what a small town can can um, launch. Yeah. Capability, right? Gosh, Missy, this has been so informative and really a pleasure for me. I hope it's been for everybody else. Yeah, me too. So I'm going to ask that you visit us again at Hawthorne and continue to share the good works. And I'll look forward to your um, doctoral application anytime soon. <laughs> That's right. I have till Halloween. So <laughs> That's it. It's in my phone. Special. And then I put... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, just a special runs through October, so. Fantastic. And then I put here my, my contact info is here at the end. I invite oh, all of the Hawthorne students, please, to message me. I'm so happy to help with questions, comments. I absolutely love talking to other students. So my contact info is there. And then if you are interested in the protocol, please join us. We will give Hawthorne students discounts. So just let us know. Beautiful offering. Thank you for that generosity, too. Yeah. All right. With that, I'm going to close the call and thank you again and everybody for participating in this. And um, yes, I was just going to tell us about uh, our next All About Alumni. It's coming up in a month on August 7th. We'll go live with Angela Montoya. She's a graduate from our Master of Science in Holistic Nutrition Clinical Training Program. So I hope you'll join us for that too. And until then, I want to wish you all the best of health. I hope you take good care. Bye for now.